Okay, so here we have a table with a whole bunch of organic molecules. And so this question will carry on on the next slide. We've actually got quite a few questions. We've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. So it's a lot of questions. So it says, write down the letter that represents a ketone. Okay, so a ketone is a molecule like this, for example, which has um, a whole bunch of hydrogen. And then you would have like a double bond oxygen um, over here. Now, what's important for it to be a ketone, the double bond oxygen on the carbon like that must be in between two other carbons, okay? It mustn't be in between a carbon and a hydrogen. It must be in between two carbons. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so it's definitely not that one. Uh, it's not that one. It's not that one because that's an alkene. Um, it could be that one. Let's have a look. Although you see this oxygen is on the side. When it's on the side, then it is normally, well done, an older hide. Whereas here we have an oxygen somewhere in the middle. Um, so it's actually going to be E because we should know that when you name a, when you name a ketone, it always ends in the word O-N-E. So that's also in the word ketone. Okay, um, so write down the letter, it is E. Which form, which uh, substance has the general formula CnH2n minus 2? Now you should know from just your general theory on organic chemistry that we've got three types of um, hydrocarbons. We've got alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Okay, now alkanes have the general formula, um, whoopsie, CnH2n plus 2. Alkenes, CnH2n, and alkynes, like that. So we know that this then is an alkyne, which is something that has a triple bond. And in the word alkyne, we can also see Y-N-E. So these are substances that end in the word Y-N-E. And so this one would be F. This Okay, this question says, is an isomer of 2-methyl but 2-ene? Okay, so let's talk about isomers. Okay, so isomers have the same amount of each atom, okay, but are but the atoms are structurally um, arranged differently. Okay, I know that the English there wasn't the best, but you know what I'm trying to say. In like structurally, the atoms are arranged differently. So, for example, um, one example is something like this, which is butane. So if you had to go count all the carbons and hydrogens, we would have four carbons and 10 hydrogens, okay? But if you instead had to look at this molecule, which if you had to go count everything, it would also have um, four carbons and 10 hydrogens. However, you see that we've arranged it differently. And so what I was trying to say is that isomers have the same amount of each atom. So that's what we can see here. Same amount of carbons and same amount of hydrogens, but the atoms are structurally arranged differently. And remember, we get three different types of isomers, chain, functional, and positional. Okay, so what we are doing here, they're saying um, it is an isomer of 2-methylbut-2-ene. Uh, so let's quickly go draw that. So it's a, it's a four-carbon molecule. Well, it's got four carbons in the main chain on because of the BUT. On carbon number two, there is a double bond over there. And then on carbon number two, there's also a methyl branch, which is a one carbon branch. Okay, now I'm gonna go fill in hydrogens everywhere else. Okay, so let's go count all of the carbons. So there is one, two, three, four, five carbons. Okay, so that's gonna be um, five carbons. Then let's see how many hydrogens. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hydrogens, and that's it. Okay, so we're looking for a molecule that's gonna have five carbons and ten hydrogens. So if we come here to pent two in, we know that um, pent is five, so pent is five, and then on carbon two, there's a double bond. There it is. Now we just go put hydrogen everywhere else. Remember that each carbon must only be surrounded by four things. So over here, we've already got four things. You see one, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. Um, and I don't add a hydrogen here because there's already four bonds around that carbon. So if we go count one, two, three, four, five carbons, that looks good. Let's count the hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Exactly the same as that. And so the isomer will be compound C. So we'll say C over there. This one says, 
Um, write down the letter that represents a compound that has the same molecular formula as ethyl ethanoate. Well, this is another isomer question because isomers have the same molecular formula because they have the same amount of everything. For example, this one um, over here would be C5H10, but then this one that we had earlier would also be c 5 H10. So isomers have the same molecular formula, but they look different. So we're going to go quickly check out ethyl ethanoate. Okay, so ethyl ethanoate, that is an ester. Now remember, with an ester, the first part is the alcohol part. So let's go draw that in, CC and then um, O like that. And then there's the carboxylic acid part, which is the ethanoate. So we'll put that over there. Okay, and then all of the rest is um, hydrogen. So if we had to go count all the carbons and everything, we'd get one, two, three, four. So four carbon. The hydrogens, they would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the oxygens, they would be two. What is the, think about this carefully. What other molecules do we know that have two oxygens in them? It's not alcohols, because they have an OH. It's not aldehydes, they have an oxygen. It's not ketones, they have an oxygen. It's carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids have two oxygens in them. See there? So we have to go find a carboxylic acid in this table. Now a carboxylic acid always has that Ku part. Ah, look at that. You know how a carboxylic acid has that? Let me just show you again. See how it's got that C double... C double oxygen hydrogen part there. So that's probably the answer, but let's just make sure that this has four carbons. One, two, three, four, perfect. So this would be an isomer of ethyl ethanoate. Remember that guys, um, carboxylic acids and esters are isomers of each other. So if we had to go, if we had to go look at the molecular formula of this one, in case you're interested, there's four carbons. Um, five, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens, and then two oxygens. Look at that, it's perfect. Okay, these questions carry on. It says write down the IUPAC. Okay, so that's the naming of compound A. Okay, so this, the first step, remember naming. First step is, remember, I like to break naming up into three main parts. Um, and the first part, which is this part, is what is the length of the longest carbon chain. So for example, one, two, three, or well, let's go draw it out first, should we? Um, so let's expand it. So it's CH3, then there's a carbon. Now attached to that carbon is a BR, and attached is a CH3. So we're gonna put a CH3, okay. Um, then there's a CH2, then there is a carbon, just a random carbon, which has a CH3 attached to it. Or we can go down or up. It's also got a hydrogen attached to it. Okay, and then we get to another carbon, which has a CH3 and a hydrogen, and then there's a CH3. Okay, so the first step is to find the longest continuous chain. So that'll just be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yes, some of you might say one, two, three, four, five, six, for example, or some of you might say one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all fine. No, you're not gonna get more than six though. So that we're gonna call hex, because six means hex. The next step is to try to figure out what is this molecule? Like, is it an alcohol, ketone, aldehyde, carboxylic acid, alkene, alkane, what is it? Well, you see it's just got a whole bunch of carbons and hydrogens, but then there is a halogen over here. So this is a halo alkane. Now, when you name a halo alkane, um, you don't put um, like hex halo or something like that. No, you just put A-N-E at the end, okay? And then this part is the branches, okay? So we are gonna look at all the branches now. So if this is the main chain, then the branches are all the parts that are gonna stick out. So it's gonna be that part, this part, this part, and this part, wow, okay. So there's quite a few branches there. Now, you wanna name this molecule from the side that gives us the lowest branch numbers. Some of you might be saying, Kevin, don't we name it from the side closest to the BR because it's a haloalkane? And this is the part of organic chemistry of grade 12 that is, has a, that is, that, that a lot of teachers don't mention. Halo, normally, if it was like an alcohol, aldehyde, ketone, um, alkene, alkyne, anything like those that have functional groups, 
you normally name it from the side that is closest to the functional group. But with a halo alkane, you don't necessarily name it from the side that's closest to the, halo, um, to the functional group. You name it just like you would name a normal alkane where you try and make the branch numbers as low as possible. It's weird, right? But that's what halo alkanes, that's what happens with halo alkanes. You don't name it from the side closest to the functional group. You name it from the side where you get the lowest branch numbers. So the halo alkanes are like, they didn't really make it in life, okay? They like failed functional groups. They, they're not that powerful. So we don't, we ignore the functional group part and we just treat it as a normal branch. Um, okay, so check this out. If we name it from the left, where would your branches be? Well, there would be a branch on carbon number um, two, which is this one and this one. There would be a branch on carbon number four and there'd be a branch on carbon number five. Okay, so that's two, four and five. Just remember those numbers, two, four and five. If we name it from the side that is cl uh, on the right hand side, sorry, then we would get a branch on carbon number two, carbon number three and carbon number five. And so we will choose that because that gives us the lower numbers. So we are gonna label this uh, molecule from the right hand side. So on carbon number two, um, on carbon number three, and on carbon number five, we're gonna have methyl branches. And then on carbon number five, again, we have a bromo. Now the rule of IUPAC says it must be alphabetical. So B comes first, so we're gonna start with that one. So we're gonna say five bromo, then we're gonna say two comma three comma five, and then we're not just gonna say methyl, we're gonna say trimethyl, because there's three of them. If it was two, you would say di, if it's three, you say tri. And so that would be the name of this molecule. And so even on the memo, they made the classic mistake where they named it from this side because they think that's you must name it from a side that's closest to the functional group. That is correct if it was an alcohol, alkene, alkyne, um, you know, any of those other molecules. But with halo alkanes, it is not true, okay? I'll even show you, so it's not just me saying this, there is also um, certain textbooks that even mention this. I'll show you this textbook, hold on. All right, so here we have another textbook. Now have a look at the part that I've highlighted. It says that you must number it from the side that is nearest to the first substituent, which means branch, irrespective if it is a halogen or an alkyl group, okay? Um, ignore the part with double and triple bond. Then in brackets here, when, a, when haloalkanes are named, the halogen atom is regarded the same as any other substituent and does not enjoy preference above the others. So you don't treat haloalkanes like normal functional groups. They are the only ones that have this weird thing. So please keep that in mind. A lot of teachers don't know this, okay? Now this question says, um, what is the structural formula of compound F? So compound F, we're just gonna go draw it out. Okay, so the way I like to draw it, it's very easy. You just go to this part here. So that's pent. So we make five carbons. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, that part's done. On carbon number two, triple bond, because that's what Y-N-E is, it's a triple bond. So you can label this as carbon two, or you can do that as carbon two, it doesn't matter. So we put a triple bond, okay, that's done. Then on carbon number four, so if that's number two, then this is number four, um, there is gonna be a dimethyl. That means there's gonna be two methyls. So there's gonna be a methyl going up and a methyl going down like that, okay? And now we are just gonna go fill in hydrogen Wherever, everywhere else. Making sure that each carbon is always surrounded by no more than four bonds, okay? So here you won't add anything because this carbon is already surrounded by four and this carbon is already surrounded by four, okay? And so that would be your answer. And as I said, you could also do it the other way around, okay? So yours might be the other way around. For compound D, okay, which is gonna be an aldehyde because it's got an oxygen on the side, could even be a alcohol, but we'll check. Um, write down the homologous series. So let's go draw it out to make sure what it is. So it's got a CH3, see that? Then it's got a CH2, okay, so CH2. Then it's got another CH2. Then it's got a carbon 
with a hydrogen and an oxygen. You might say, yeah, but Kevin, how do you know that it's not this? It can't be that because then look here, there's nothing here and there's nothing here. Um, and so this thing would be empty, okay? And you can't put like a double bond and a triple bond because then this one's gonna have problems. So the only way that this would work is that the hydrogen is here, for example, and then you've got the oxygen, but the oxygen is a double bond. Now you could also do that like this, for example, but we 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 definitely gonna have a double bonded oxygen um, because otherwise things just aren't gonna work out over here. Let me show you that again. Some learners would say maybe the O and the H is together. Fine, let's put them together. But then you have a carbon here that has it only has two bonds. But then you might say, yeah, but Kevin, then we can just put a triple bond. But then this one has too many. And so um, the only way that this would work is that the hydrogen is alone and then you've got the double bond oxygen. We see this double bond oxygen with aldehydes, ketones, uh, carboxylic acids. Now, if you look at this, we've got a double bond oxygen, just like a ketone, but this double bond oxygen is on the side. Can you see that this carbon is in between a carbon and a hydrogen? So it's not a ketone, this is an aldehyde because the double bond oxygen is on the side. Okay, um, and then it says, what is the name of its functional group? The functional group is the part of the molecule that gives it its special property. And so that's this area over here. Specifically, it is that and that. So we have to show that one of these parts is a hydrogen. Okay, now if they were just talking about that part over there, then you call it a carbonyl, but that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about um, its whole functional group, which is this, oh, there's a little line there, um, this part of a year. Now, it's actually quite an interesting one. It's called a four mil. Um, you're probably never gonna see a question like that. I've never really seen it, to be honest, but that part there is called a formal group. Okay, now it says draw or give the structural formula, which means draw, of its functional isomer. Okay, so we need to understand the following. In grade 12, we get uh, isomers, right, which we um, spoke about earlier. And we get three types, chain, uh, position, and functional. Now, if you look at functional, okay, let's take functional and talk about that a little bit further. These are, um, these are, um, isomers with different functional groups. Now remember, a functional group is the part of the molecule that makes it unique, like an alcohol, aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, ester, alkene, alkyne, okay? So if a molecule has a different functional group, then it means it's a totally different molecule. So functional isomers are different homologous series. So like the one might be an alcohol and the other one might be an alkene or an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid. Now, let me quickly make this easy for you. In grade 12, there are only two functional uh, or like two types of functional isomers, okay? I'll show you both. The first one is with an ester and a carboxylic acid. So let me show you an ester quickly. I'll show you a four, a, a, a five carbon, no, let's go with the three carbon ester. Okay, so that is an ester with three carbons, right? Then I'm gonna draw a carboxylic acid with three carbons. So go ahead quickly and check how many carbons there are in both molecules, how many hydrogens, and how many um, oxygens. You will see that it is exactly the same. There are three carbons, six hydrogens and two oxygens. These are functional isomers because this is an ester, this is a carboxylic acid. Their functional group is completely different. The other one that we need to know for grade 12 is aldehydes and ketones. It's only these two, okay? So let me draw you a three carbon aldehyde double bond oxygen always on the side if it's an aldehyde. And then with a ketone, the double bond oxygen is always on a carbon that is in between two other carbons, okay? If you had to now go count all the carbons, all the hydrogens, and all the oxygens, you would see that it is exactly the same in these two molecules. In both molecules, you're gonna have three carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. So those are um, 
functional isomers once again. We can see the functional group is totally different, but they have the same amount of each thing. So remember this one for grade 12 and remember this one for grade 12. So here they say, um, take this aldehyde, which we had, and give it structural formula for the isomer. So we just learned that the isomer of an aldehyde, or the, 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 the functional isomer of an aldehyde is a ketone. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna see how many carbons this thing has, four, and I'm just gonna go make a four carbon ketone, however you want. We know that with a ketone, the double bond oxygen is somewhere in the middle. So like maybe there, okay? And then just go fill in hydrogens wherever we have to. Don't put a hydrogen here because then this carbon would be have more than four bonds. And that's it. That is, um, and, and don't put this carbon double bond oxygen on carbon number one or on carbon number four because then it's an aldehyde because then the double bond oxygen is on the side. But for it to be a ketone, the double bond oxygen has to be in between two other carbons. Okay, and so there's your answer for um, this one over here. Okay, this one says for compound G, which is butane, let's quickly draw that out. It's just a four carbon alkane. It's basic as you get. Uh, Kevin, it's not basic, it's a shittik. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about, guys. I meant like it's basic as in it's easy. Um, for compound G, write down the um, IUPAC name of its chain isomer. Okay. So what is a chain isomer? Well, a chain, or first of all, what is an isomer? Well, we've spoken about that quite a bit. So an isomer has the same amount of carbons and hydrogens, for example, as this one. But to have a chain isomer, you have to take this chain length, which is four, and make it different. So what we can do is let's make it three carbons, and then let's put the other carbon over there. Don't put the other carbon over there, because that's still gonna be four carbons long then. And don't put it over there, because that's still gonna be four carbons long. Put it over there. Then it's not, then you can only have three carbons in the main chain. Then just go fill in hydrogens everywhere else. And this is what a chain isomer is. It's the same uh, number of carbon and hydrogen in both molecules. But here we have four carbons in the main chain, okay? Here we have three. And then we just add a branch over there. Okay, so that is what it would look like, but now we need to give the name. So the main carbon chain, how many carbons are there? Three, so that's P prop. So we're gonna say prop. What type of molecule is this? You have nine options. Ester, carboxylic acid, um, alcohol, alkene, alkane, alkyne, you know, all of those. Well, this is just an alkane, so it's still an alkane. Okay, so it's definitely not a functional isomer because it's still an alkane in both. However, on carbon number two, we have a methyl branch. And there we go, that would be the name. This question says a balanced equation for the complete, complete combustion. Okay, you need to understand that. Combustion is when you take a certain material, you react it with oxygen, you produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, that is what combustion is. Whether the starting material is an alkane, alcohol, alkene, it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is, and they're saying for compound G, remember that. So butane, if you go, um, oh, they want us to use molecular formula. Okay, so if you look at butane, it's got four carbons, and it's got, if you go count, it's got 10 hydrogens. Okay, then you're just gonna say plus oxygen, which is diatomic, so it's O2. Then you're just gonna say CO2 plus water. Now to balance this thing, always balance the carbon first, then the hydrogen, then the oxygen, in that order specifically, trust me. So we start with the carbon. On this side there are four carbons, so we'll put a four over there. Okay, look at the hydrogen next. On this side there are 10, and on this side there's two. So we'll put a five over here, because five times two is 10. Now do the oxygen. On this side, there's two. On this side, there is four times two, which is eight. Five times, um, that's just a one. It's just a little one over there. So five times one is five. So there are 13 oxygens on the right, and there are only two on the left. So what you do is you multiply this side by 13 over two, because if you say 13 over two multiplied by two, that's 13, right? But now we just have a little bit of a problem and that is 
we're not allowed to leave it as a fraction. So what we do is we get rid of this denominator by multiplying everything by two. So we put a two there, this will just become a 13. This will then become an eight, and this will become a 10. And there we go.